once again welcome to the City of Western's 4th of July celebration. All these truths be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that, that they are endowed by their creator with a certain unalienable rights, that among these are light of living and the pursuit of happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston as we celebrate the 248th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. How appropriate that we are here today, just outside this building, on March 5th, 1770, five men were among the first casualties of the Battle for Independence in what would later be known as the Boston Massacre. From 1771 through 1782, a patriotic generation had a young. Given the trouble of very well here, on July 18, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was first proclaimed to the citizens of Boston from this very spot. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in reciting our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Greetings, salutations, of this 
historical balcony here in the heart of Boston. I am proud to stand here before you as Captain Manning of the ancient and honorable artillery company of Massachusetts. <coughs> Since the founding of this great nation, the Captain Commanding of this honorable company has read the Declaration of the 13 United States of America, now proudly 50, on this upcoming 250th year anniversary of this great nation. As a nation made up of varied races, ethnicities, and religions, I am proud to say I am the second American Jew to stand before you and read the Declaration. Should be obtained. 
and when so said, he is utterly neglected to attend. He has refused to pass other laws for accommodation of large districts of people, unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies in places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of the public record for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing the very firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has intended to prevent the population of these states for that purpose of obstructing the law, the naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws establishing judiciary power. He has been judged dependent on his will alone, the tenure of their office, and a month and payment of their salary. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislators. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving him a sense to the acts of pretended legislation. The quartering large bodies of our troops among us for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murder they should commit on the inhabitants of these states. For cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. For imposing taxes on us without consent. For depriving us in many cases of the benefits of a trial by jury. For transporting us beyond sea to be tried for pretended offenses. For abolishing the free system of English law in a neighboring province, establishing the arraign, arbitrary government, and enlarging its boundaries, so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these times. For taking away our charges, abolishing our most valuable laws, and all the fundamental reforms of our government. For suspending our own legislations and declaring themselves invested with powers to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has flooded our sea, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns. Destroy the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the work of death, desolation, and tyranny. Already begun in circumstances of cruelty and perfidy, scared to travel in the most barbarous ages, and totally unworthy of the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens to take captive on the high seas to be at against their country, to become the execution of their friends and brethren, or to cause himself by their hands. He has incited the government to the country. He has 
fast, 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 f